and older in your work, uh, the size of your CV keeps decreasing. So when you're younger, your CV will be like four or five pages. And as you get older and older, you just put it into one page because it's just too much to say. Uh, and nobody wants to know what you've done for such a long time. Uh, so just to give you a little background, yes, I've been in Southern Rajasthan uh, since I graduated in 86. I came here to Udaipur and set up my sort of camp here. And, uh, uh, you know, pursuing a design career in, in a small town like Udaipur in those early years was really quite a task. But uh, so I had a very long 10 year struggle before I found my own space and, uh, you know, do the things that I do now. So I will try and uh, share with you a little bit of my journey in the hope that, uh, you know, you all uh, can feel a little inspired. And, you know, it's also, uh, it's also an indication of how, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the path to Paths to careers are not very easy. You have to, there are many, you know, there are many obstacles. There are many things that come in the way, but finally you get there where you want to get there. So I will, without much uh, 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 discussion, I can start share. Uh, you will need to allow me to share screen, show it. I'm not able to share the screen. So you have to make me a host or something. So, yeah. Shovit, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll just give you a minute. I'll. Uh, yeah, okay, great. So uh, let me just, uh, while we are waiting for the share screen to happen, uh, let me just say that the environment that I came into in 86 in Rajasthan was very different from the environment now. So, for example, literacy was only 16%, you know, only 16% people, you know, women were literate at that time. Uh, and male literacy was probably 30%. And now it's so different. Now more than 50% women in Rajasthan can read and write. So there has been change and social change is very slow. And uh, uh, it takes time. Uh, social change in some, in some areas is very quick. For example, in the area of clothing, you know. Uh, for example, uh, very, you know, in, in, even in the villages now, you see only the senior women, were, uh, senior males wearing dhoti. Dhoti is kind of just, you know, gradually it's kind of eased out. The, so social change in the area of things like apparel, lots of these things change very fast. For example, markets have improved. You get a lot of things in the in the rural markets that you never got previously. So, uh, for example, in some remote locations, you can you can actually get, uh, you know, glucose biscuits. You can get Maggi noodles. You can get all those things. Uh, earlier, you know, you had to really struggle to uh, uh, get some of the basics, if you want to call those things basics. And I remember in the early years how we used to, uh, how we, how difficult some of these things were uh, while we were struggling to, you know, work in this kind of sector. So the uh, the uh, Arts College proposed that I call my lecture "Design for a Purpose." That's absolutely absolutely correct. But uh, I would like to further subtitle it by saying overview of design in the development sector, because that is where I've worked. And of course, uh, working in the uh, working in this kind of sector helps to improve life, it helps to improve well being. And one of the most important components in this area of social design is communication. And I will, I will journey you quickly through what what have been communication journeys uh, that you know, I have seen and what was there before me. So there, there must have been plenty of journeys before I started working, but I will just take you through one or two. Uh, some of you, maybe some of you in your uh, in your college uh, um, syllabus, some teacher, some faculty member may have exposed your, you know, your mind to, uh, you know, traditional nar narrative forms like the coward here. So this, this probably is one of these, uh, this, you know, the, one of these early examples of how uh, communities used visuals for communication and the Kavadia would go around from place to place looking at you know taking this uh, this box with him and he would tell you about your genealogy and you know the rest of it so really speaking social communication if you if you want to define it it's all about information transfer it's about dissemination and typically the kind of work that i'm in is, 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 you know, surrounds the area of public health. So it could be malaria messages, it could be H HIV, it could be a host of other things. And nothing is more uh, relevant to your generation now uh, 
than COVID, which has struck us. And COVID has used many, many forms of social communication. Typically, it's it's wanting you to uh, change your behavior. For example, you know, mask wearing, uh, you know, from non-mask wearing to mask wearing. That is that is the behavior change, and social communication is all about that. So, in the old days, if you if you think about what what did what did the government of India do for in the area of safe reproductive health, in the area of family planning, for example, so. In, 19, in 1966, for example, one of their ways of advertising their work was through postage stamps. And the, the, you know, the postage stamp has died now. You don't really send letters. You do, you know, you all know about, uh, I don't know how many of you have had a chance even to uh, write a letter to someone and put a postage stamp on it. Because if you've been, you know, if you've been born after what, 1990 or 94, I don't think you would have had a chance to do that. So this red triangle was one of the symbols that was designed in 1968, which appeared in a number of places. For example, uh, this would this would advertise uh, uh, family planning with slogans, you know, Pani bhi simit, parivar bhi simit. And where would these appear? These would appear in front of, you know, in a water tank, for example, in a village. So uh, NID had these kind of projects way back. And one very significant project that NID was involved in in 1981 was designing a whole lot of communication material for rural communities. And the locations were Bharatpur, Savai, Madhapur, and Kota. So uh, I, when I started my work, uh, I really was not aware that NID had done a lot of this work in the 80s, which were in the, which were in the archives of NID. But by 1990, I was discovering that, uh, you know, com rural communities understand visuals and understand pictures very differently. So, you know, in the interests of our time, and so we can ask these questions later, ticks and crosses are something that you know you know communities learn in school if you had an opportunity to go to school you will you will know what a cross so what what is what is what you mean by a cross what you mean by a tick <coughs> now i i had made many mistakes in my earlier career and i realized that you know people a lot of people were not understanding ticks and crosses and a tick for example was interpreted as a hattewala lota or a, or a lota to you know, scoop out water from a water pot. Now, this these kind of examples I'm showing you are relevant even now. Even now, you go into remote locations in Bihar, MP, in you know, in some of the North Indian states, which are relatively which have relatively lower levels of literacy than South Indian states. You will still find people responding in the same way. Ki do baas hai aur baas ke piche matka rakha. and the tick will be seen as our inter interpreted as something else so there were two lessons that i learned very early one was that there's no need to reinvent the wheel look at what people have already done before you and draw from those examples and take from those examples and then you must field test your work just show show your community what uh, what you are developing for them if you're making a product for them they have to be involved in your design work so for example there are there were more mistakes that i was steadily making which i rectified over time which i rectified Subsequently, for example, uh, the symbol of the scales, the weighing scales. Now, this is seen as a um, sign of a grocery shop. It's not seen as a sign of justice, which is something that you learn uh, if you've been to college or if you've been to, you know, if you've had an opportunity to go to school, you will know that uh, scales means equality. But in a rural community, it just means that it means a grocery store. So people would understand this visual as. Uh, here are two young people rushing off to the gro gro grocery store to buy something. Similarly, comic books are also not understood, uh, you know, because comics are, is again a learned, you learn these concepts uh, if you are exposed to the world of comics. So a comic bubble, for example, is seen as, you know, there's a cloud and then there's a tree in the cloud. And so this comes us, this, this brings us to some, some things that we need to understand, which is visual literacy, visual perception, it's very contextual and every community responds to visuals in different ways and uh, for example a state bank symbol if you take the state bank symbol say to some some location in africa nobody's going to know what it means and similarly supposing there's a there's some bank in say uh, you know in kenya and you bring it here uh, who's going to recognize that so symbols and visuals are very contextual and visual literacy and visual perception are very important uh, when you are developing communication material within the framework of social design or social development. And uh, similarly, you know, 
you know, there, it's a myth if someone tells you that visuals are universal and visuals can be understood by everybody. No, it's not true. Uh, visuals can be missed. They have a lot of scope for misinterpretation, a lot of scope for being interpreted differently from what you have intended. So very early on, I, I began to collect pictures from the community and I developed for myself uh, what, I, what we call a picture dictionary. And a picture dictionary helps you to make your own kind of uh, develop your own drawings and develop your own symbols. For example, uh, you know, the picture on one is the way rural communities draw a house. Uh, picture two is where is how pregnancy is shown. Pregnancy is shown as a black dot. Uh, abortion on number three is abortion. For example, it will show you, uh, you know, uh, this woman is pregnant and yet she's bleeding. So 100% uh, she's not able to carry through with her pregnancy. So this is how rural communities interpret pictures. And it's there on my website for somebody, some of you would like to see or learn more about it. And many learnings come from this. Uh, for example, if you look at number four, and if you look at the hand pump picture, uh, the, the, the kind of rules that you have for drawing, uh, you know, perspective, or you would have, you know, on, uh, what is it called, eye level views, those are all things that, those are Western concepts that we have been taught in the world of, you know, engineering and art, that, you know, there, there has to be, a, you know, there has to be a one point of view when, so on and so forth. So here you will see that in both these examples, they have mixed views. They have mixed an aerial view and they have mixed a side view. For example, in the hand pump, that's what they've done. At the bottom picture, number four, which is, a, which is showing a field and a well. Again, in the well, you can see that, uh, you know, the boundary of the well is an aerial view and the bucket is the side view. And the, and the field is, for example, an aerial view. So many communities mix mixed perspectives, mixed views like this, and there is no single, you know, eye level view or whatever it is, a one point perspective or two point perspective. These, these concepts do not exist uh, in, in traditional uh, art forms. For example, you can see in the palaces of uh, Rajasthan, you can look at many wall paintings and none of them will follow the perspective rules or, you know, the eye level kind of views. So once you, once you have put together a whole lot of visuals, and, and you've made yourself a picture dictionary, how do you then translate it back into, uh, in, for your client, how do you translate it back into a piece of communication material? This, for example, is a communication product uh, explaining the uh, termination of pregnancy, explaining uh, when it is safe and unsafe for you to seek an abortion if you so require it. So in the top visual, you will see that the, the, the pregnancy is progressing from one to nine, shown by the black dots. Uh, some of the pregnancy rules have changed in, in you know, the past few years. So this was made a little earlier. It was made in around 2007. So it's a slightly older piece of communication material. So there have been newer changes in the laws, but this, this was relevant for that time, which said that up to uh, five months of pregnancy, it's safe for you to seek a termination. But beyond five months, it becomes unsafe for you. And it's also not uh, acceptable by the laws of the government of India. And then since you can't use sticks and cross, uh, the woman is, you know, raising her hand like that, saying that, you know, I, this cannot be done because, you know, you're beyond, your pregnancy has progressed beyond a certain time period. So that's how you would, uh, uh, you know, translate what, what you have picked up from your field situation back into a practical example. So this is just to quickly show you what really happens in a, uh, you know, in a practical context, you would, you would look at this is, you know, this, uh, this was a close up of a larger piece, uh, larger communication product. So you have stories around that, you know, which help your community to understand uh, why it's important to seek a termination of pregnancy very, very early and not to delay it. If, not to delay a decision about uh, seeking an abortion. So social communication, as I shared with you before, is this whole process of uh, changing a community's behavior from a negative behavior to a desired positive behavior. And reproductive health has been a very, very tough thing for us because uh, the government of India, each time a political party comes into power, uh, the, the support for reproductive health, the support for, uh, you know, uh, information to be transferred to young people, 
uh, is not there. It's not, it's not very easy. Uh, when you talk to young people about contraception, uh, you know, government programs do not want you to do that. They want you to talk to older people when actually young teenagers need all this kind of information. Of course, a lot of government schemes have now changed. Uh, government programs are also beginning to recognize that you need to tell young people very early about lots of these issues around reproductive health so that they are able to uh, they are able to uh, be responsible for their own health and they are able to be responsible for their own behavior now if you tell if you tell a 15 16 year old uh, why it is dangerous for a young girl to be pregnant at 15 uh, girls will understand uh, young men will understand why why, why these things are being said when you medically explain a certain reason, when you also explain to young people, delay, delay your sexual activity just because it's safer for you. And if you, if you need to, uh, if you need to, uh, you know, get together with your partner, there are many, many options available for you to delay a pregnancy or to not get pregnant. Now, these are the things that are very difficult for us as communicators to, um, your transfer, but it has to be done and we have done it. And the background is superstition, patriarchy, shame, silence. Okay, so uh, I've you know, done quite a lot of work with young people in Southern Rajasthan. And uh, somehow over the years, you build up your favorite sort of subjects. And, and one of my very passionate subjects has been menstruation. So in the early years when we were working in 2000, 2003, uh, it was not just enough to tell young people about the process of the scientific explanation of menstruation. This needed to be done because there was a lot of superstition around menstruation. For example, uh, cloth, uh, using, using a menstrual cloth is still something that I will promote extensively. It's still something that is used by 80% of women in India, which I'm very glad about. Uh, menstruators, uh, let me not use the word women and girls. Let me use the word menstruators, those who menstruate. So. In those early years, underwear usage was very low. Very few people wore underwear where I was working. So we had to design, we had to design a product that would uh, that would go with a practice. So it had to be a, a pad had to be designed so you could wear it with a nada because people were wearing cloth like a langot uh, in place of something to absorb your menstrual flow. Okay, so so. If you are a designer, you're sitting in your four walls of your design studio and you're trying to design a clock pad for a bunch of young people, it's not going to work. You have to go out there. You have to go out there and learn from them and then transfer it into a design work, get back to them, and then develop your design in a participatory way. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the years. This was 2000, 2003. Easy for you all to say that it's 20 years 20 years ago, it has its relevance even now. And that's the reason why I'm even sharing this with you. So for example, if you're looking at, if you're talking to young people about anatomy, because that's what you need to talk about as a first step to menstruation, I built on what NID had already done. NID was looking at uh, communication material in layers, give young people, <coughs> give community information in layers. So this is how we were doing it. We were looking at, the naked body first we were covering the body then we were uncovering the body and we always had it in you know layers so that young people could understand uh, what are the changes in in your body how is your body structure how does it work and i had used the cover to as a communication tool which i'd worked on extensively and uh, the cover as if some of you have seen it is pretty big it's about one foot one and a half foot high you know you know that big if you can see me in the in your video, uh, so when when we are working our way through it, it had to be made portable. So uh, one of the interns who was working for me in those years was Sarika, who was featured over here, and she helped me to translate this cover into a portable form into a book. And again, this book is used even today, and it's been reprinted a dozen times. So that's the reason why one needs to design very carefully because your design has to be sustainable. You cannot have an unsustainable design. You know, and earlier, the earlier designers like Victor Papinik, you will be reading about all these designers in your designs, you know, when you're, uh, you know, in your curriculum, they talked about all these 
issues. They talked about sustainability. They talked about obsolescence and design. So you will need to look at all this and connect it back, uh, you know, to your work and uh, to your work and uh, to your, um, you know, life even. So, uh, so what happened was in around 2010, uh, about 10 years, you know, 10, 11 years ago, I saw that people were shifting to market-based products. Earlier, for your menstruation, for your periods, you just cut up your you know, cloth from your uh, kurta, shirts, bed covers, turbans, safa, saris, petticoats. That's what, you, you, that's what uh, menstruators have used forever. And suddenly you were getting this you know, fleece-like material available uh, very easily for you know, 10, 12, 14 rupees. And then people were switching to disposable Bags because you were getting that because the media was telling you that cloth is, you know, cloth sucks. It's a bad thing. Don't use cloth. That's absolutely not true. Cloth is, cotton cloth is the most beautiful absorbent in the world. But then, you know, multinational companies will make you buy things that you're not supposed to even look at. For example, you know, take a look at all that kurkure, take a look at all that Maggi noodle. Certainly it's not good for you. But then, you know, the ads make you want to go towards that product and once you you've gone once you've gone twice you've gone three times and you're hooked to maggie for life okay so that is that is what i mean by aspiration that is what i mean by looking at uh, always aiming for something that is perceived to be better because media tells you that's better so look at the look at the uh, these uh, you know this switching to market based menstrual products is no different it's just like your you know your telephones Look at this range of these Nokia telephones. You know, probably I'm the only one who still uses this. I have a smartphone, but I still love this one because it just serves its purpose. Okay, but what do what do all these <clears throat> what do all these sanitary napkins do? It's full of plastic, you know. It's full of plastic. Nobody nobody looks to think about what is in a sanitary napkin. So as a designer, I was doing all that. What is in the raw material? It's completely plastic from top to bottom. You know, your top is a non-woven polymer. Don't let anyone tell you that it's cloth. It's a polymer-based material. If it was cloth, it would be your, your sanitary napkin would be five. Each napkin would be six times more the cost. It's plastic. Plastic is very cheap. And plastic is a polymer. Polymer can have many types of derivatives. Okay. So, and then the absorbing, absorbing, uh, absorbing, uh, absorbent layer is, is wood pulp, which is full of chemicals. That's why your pads are so thin. You know, in our days, we got pads that were this thick because they were not filled with chemicals as they are now. And this is the, this is the kind of audit that one needs to do in one's life, whether it's in sanitary napkin or whether it's anything else. For example, uh, I very commonly see now uh, you know, face tissues, paper tissues, not the not the paper napkin that you wipe your hands after you've eaten your samosa. I just mean face tissues. Why do you need that? You're cutting down a tree. Use a handkerchief, no? Use a handkerchief like this. And don't worry about losing the handkerchief. You know, you can buy five, six more. You can buy 12 handkerchiefs more because you're just saving one tree. And okay, you're washing. You're using water to wash that uh, hanky. But water is a renewable resource, no? It takes so long to grow a tree. So these are the things one needs to look at. And so, so my work responds to environment. My work responds to everything that's happening around us. And this is, this is how products get dumped into a dump site. And in, 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 uh, in T3 village outside Udaipur, we have a dump site that is three stories high now. And we never had a dump site in Udaipur. So when we're looking at, when you're looking at menstruation, when you're looking at awareness, when you when we are looking at breaking silence, breaking breaking superstition, you know you have to plan, you have to make strategies, and you have to work with the community. Okay, so one of the things that uh, that I was always doing from the start was stitch your own cloth pad. Don't worry about you know market stuff. Make your own cloth pad at home. Of course, I have a production unit, and I and I make cloth pads too. My NGO makes cloth pads, but you have to also tell young people that it's just okay to use cloth. Nothing was wrong with the cloth. If cloth was a bad thing, our grandmothers would have died long ago. All our grandmothers would have died long back. You know, and they had what, six children? It was common to have six children. Even 30 years back, it was common to have six children. 
you know cloth becomes bad if you don't wash it properly cloth becomes bad if you don't hang it in the sun and i know i know hundreds of young menstruators who are using gel based sanitary napkins which are giving them a rash which are giving them a boil but they will still be using that because somebody has told them that cloth is a bad thing so my message to all of you out there is you know is underwear a bad thing is cloth underwear a bad thing no it's not so look at the products that are there in the market see what's see what's gone into the design of it and then see if that's you know if that's good for you or not good for you so we designed the cloth pads in 2011 2012 and the design had to be different because it it had to respond to the new practice now of wearing underwear because underwear availability had increased all over south rajasthan all over all over in fact i would i would go so far as to say all over india and we believe in sustainability and so my uh, my P, my own phd journey was all about menstruation and sustainability how do you make the management of menstruation sustainable okay so so as part of the phd you of course have to uh, you know develop models and so we developed this model where you could measure sustainability of any of the products that you make so when we do our training programs uh, we we need to take the help of a lot of communication material and uh, that's when designers come in so this is the kind of stuff that we need to take in in our kit we also need to take in underwear because we have to demonstrate to younger menstru men menstruators to be i call them menstruators to be because young 11 year old girls young 12 year old girls you know have no experience of periods because they haven't yet got it so how do you fix this pad onto your underwear how do you wear the underwear you know what is a menstrual cup what is a what is a menstrual sponge what's a tampon you know you have to communicate a number of things to young people uh what's good nutrition what what why should you eat well during your periods and then you need you need designers to develop material for us okay so practically uh to on the field uh how am i doing for time i i'm guess i'm okay uh, uh practically speaking in the field this is how you know we would look we would be using our work so the the uh, the cover which you see on the left is a picture that was that was taken in 2002 and the cover book on the right was was 2 years ago in 2019 in a very remote location in called bordumsa in the arunachal state of arunachal pradesh and bordumsa district borders the burma district you know so it's getting there itself is tough but you know your your work has to reach different places if you want to you know uh, make an impact and a lot of my trainers are men because we include men in all our menstruation work we include everyone in our menstruation work because we believe that it's not just a women's issue everyone needs to be aware needs to support and needs to be sensitive so whether you are a rural group whether you are an urban male group or whether you are a young group from nirma university design nirma design school these are a bunch of young people who came for our training programs i keep i keep having these uh, we call them rural emotions and a lot of young people come and uh, stay with us for a week and then they learn a lot about design for development so every every young person stitches their own pad and if you're a non menstruator you have to stitch it and then give it to somebody you care for whether it's your cousin or whether it's your sister or your mom so that's how you one as a designer you need to be sensitive to a lot of issues okay uh shobhit had said that i could stop in between uh so would you like me to i have about 5 6 slides more so one option show it is to go through the 5 6 slides and then you know open up the floor for a discussion would that be better yeah yes ma'am that would be better because we don't have any questions right now okay great great so uh, having come this far i would then then like to introduce to you a concept called copy left it's not a new concept in the world of technology uh, all this open source uh what's it called uh, ubuntu linux linux i don't know how to pronounce that they are all open source software so the ideas ideas have come from there it's not as if it's a new concept and victor apenik long back in 71 said all these things he said that if you've designed something and it's helping somebody 
then you know you don't wait around for it to be a patent you know for you to get a patent you just put it out there because it's helping somebody so the so the joy about copy left is that it reaches it reaches places you wouldn't have imagined and the joy about copy left is scale you know you reach you reach multiple multiple numbers of people but the but the the catch about copy left is that you once you take the copy left product from somebody uh, you can modify it you can change it you can do what you want with it but you have to keep that continue to keep that work copy left for other people to copy so you can't you can't take some of my some of my designs for example change it and then say now i have a copyright on that no you got to keep it again open source okay so that's the beauty about copy left so what happens now so if you design the product this is how it moves for example ncrt in the ncrt teachers manual the menstrual wheel is there and uh, when ncrt was working with me they said okay uh, we cannot afford to give this menstrual wheel to so many so many of our teachers can you design it for us as a diy so we made it for them like a do it yourself so the teachers could you know cut this cut these pages from the spiral and then develop their own menstrual wheel and uh, you know a un agency called wscc i gave this to them too and then they uh, got this translated into chinese and english and you know uh, french and it's 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 you know it's it's there in uh, in say in many african countries speak french so it's it's over there so that's why copy left is a pretty joyful process but what happens is uh, you know after after a period of time people may forget that you had given them the original design but that's all right that's part of part of copy left so in arunachal for example uh, they they got back to me and said that okay if we start calling the pads ugher pads because our cloth pads are called ugher pads and ugher means a new beginning in the in mewadi language you know of southern rajasthan nobody will understand the meaning of ugher so we want to call our pads pure pads because in the tribal language pure means happy okay so they call them pure pads in barabanki they call the same pads smart pads and in karnataka amitu foundation calls them hybrid pads because they're using hybrid materials okay and where do these where do these uh, small women's group sell their products they sell it in the market like this you know you can see it this is in a bazaar in a village uh, called mohor uh, mohor is in the dimahasau district in assam so these are all locations that are not very easy to reach and that's the joy about copy left okay so as i'm bringing the presentation to a close i will also share with you what some design designers have done those who have worked with me sadvi for example in 2012 developed a menstrual uh, menstrual health kit for uh, the, those who are visually impaired so everything is tactile and the text is in braille you know and the text is also there which you can read if you are sighted you can help your students to uh you know you help you can help your visually imp uh, impaired students to understand this product look at it and then uh, if you are a teacher who is not who is visually impaired then this braille also so she developed this for her uh, project and in fact she got the best student design award for that year you know so these kind of exciting things happen in the world of uh, social design and if you step in this lots of stuff out there you know gayatri atu for example uh, developed uh, you know products for us uh, for our production manual she also you know made posters a poster for us uh, on men in menstruation and this one a first place in an international competition so that's a little bit about say what somebody like gayatri has done so i'm showing you work of other people so it will help you to uh, kind of get a sense of you know, this is what this is how work can be and you know these are also areas that are open for people to explore and enjoy and you know learn from for example uh, just judge uh, was a design student from the glasgow school of art and she was doing a uh, one semester product design at nid amdavad so then uh, she you know along with us at jatin sansthan she came and said that this is what i want to do and that's finally this is the product that she made and again she also got some student award somewhere and this was a washing machine hand held little uh, you know washing machine to wash your cloth pads if you don't want to wash them by hand 
you know so there are plenty of things that go on like this so this this is a non uh, you know non menstruation example for you uh, bhavik dhoni for example came from the united world institute of design in gandhinagar and uh, he came he came to us very very uh, uh, enthusiastically to work with us and then the, he he comes and two months later we have covid so he he helped us uh, he worked hands on with us because we were busy producing masks even before the lockdown you know by march 15th we were already producing masks and we were working with the government of india to put our masks on the government of india manual and because we are copy left all these things are possible because you know you don't have to worry about you know copyright and you know what you're going to do with it you know you just give it out there for people to copy because we were because government was looking at uh, handmade masks you know and then then they were saying that you know we need to tell people what kind of masks to make and after we did this there are thousands and thousands of videos that people can see on how to make make your wear how to make your own mask but that first step is crucial because you know cloth masks homemade masks are you know endorsed by the government and that's a big step because then you know you can protect yourself so bhavik also made products uh, it's it was unfortunately left in the prototype stage because of covid he couldn't progress further with it he was he was deeply troubled because cow dung cow dung aggregation uh, you know is done by only women men men don't get themselves involved in cow dung aggregation so he said okay i want to design something where you can make cow dung cakes without without really touching your hands so he had made this device which you could put cow dung there and then jam it together and you know your cow dung this you know your cow dung this would come out beautifully and i'm sure you all know this that in amazon you can buy cow dung cakes so bhavik had also mangaud you know online mangaya tha usne ye kande mangaya tha usne 50 rupees ya kuch aise tha usne so we, we i you know he said madam dekho ye mil raha hai already online mein you know so this this cop to do a, a lot of work okay so uh, our our latest intern work is you know just ongoing it's kind of coming to an end and this is but this is on instagram because uh just just for for uh, sharing for the purpose of sharing knowledge with all of you uh there are there are many uh there are many bodies that uh menstruate other than female and uh adolescent girl uh, you know ad ad adolescent girl bodies there are there are some men who menstruate you know there are some intersex people who can menstruate there are transgender people who can menstruate so this was the uh, uh uh you know this was a this was a sort of a, a instagram campaign that these three students were exploring these past uh, few uh um, weeks past you know maybe two months and this is on instagram and it tells you stories about menstruators whom you normally don't hear about so i would like urge you to kind of you know get on to this instagram and take a look at what these young people have put together you know uh, it's it's to build up sensitivity on the subject of uh the subject of menstruation and there there are lots of campaigns now around this lots of companies are being uh, lots of uh, pad manufacturers lots of menstrual product manufacturers are being urged to look at uh, uh, you know look at other groups who menstruate because menstruation has become very feminized you know it's seen as only a woman's thing it's no longer a woman's thing there are plenty of people out there other than who are not female okay so that's that's kind of some of the things that uh look at that largely i have given you an overview of social communication because that's the work that i be that i've been involved in and and i have kind of journeyed you through how how does social se sectors how do we respond to needs of the community what is a visual literacy what is visual perception how do we look at the different perspectives so largely my work has been around training i stop sharing now uh and then sort of conclude and say that largely it's it's been about looking at health looking at reproductive health uh looking at reusable products looking at how we can how as designers we can be responsible for our environment you know what are the little things we can do in our own lives to 
help the earth because uh, you all have been following the news, you know, Canada never had 49 degrees or whatever it is that they're having now. Uh, Udaipur this year did not even, we did not even cross 43. Never have we, in these 35 years I've lived here, every year for so many days, we are 33, 43 degrees, 44 degrees. Yes, we reach once in a way, we reach 45. Once in a way, we reach even 46 degrees. None of, none of that happened here this time. It was cloudy, there was cyclone, there was what and what. Okay, 40, 41, we may have reached this year. And then in Canada, people are sweltering. People are, uh, you know, uh, they're putting uh, sprinklers and, you know, trying to keep people alive. So what I'm saying is that each one of us, if we have stepped into the world of design, the first thing that comes in must come into our head is sustainability. If I'm designing something, am I being sustainable? For example, if I'm using thermocol to make my models, I'm not being sustainable. Can I make my mockups in a material that the earth can manage? Thermocol, the earth cannot manage. Nothing can manage thermocol. It'll be lying there for your grandchildren. And it'll be lying there in little, little microscopic beads, you know, microplastics they are called. Thermocol is a, is a polymer de derivative, no? Some of you will know that. And then it comes back to the, to the, you know, the water stream and we drink that. It comes back into our rivers. So I will stop here for questions. Okay. Thank so, you so yeah. much, ma'am, for your insightful conversation. And uh, I hope the youth uh, find directions like yours you know, to follow throughout the professional career. And uh, how you've imbibed it in your life, it was uh, quite a journey to look at. Uh, so uh, we don't have questions right now. I had certain points that I would just like to ask about. Uh, so for first thing was that when you are talking about behavior change, so how much time do you think, how many generations do you think, you know, the behavior change uh, will take place or can take place? So what is that timeline, you think? Some, some behaviors are easy, easy, and some behaviors are very, very difficult. Uh, smoking is one behavior which I will say is very difficult because... Uh, uh, it, it doesn't, you know, smoking has long-term effects. You know, you see the effects of your lungs, etc., etc., after a long time. So if you ask someone to, who's smoking today, you know, it's very tough. So in the world of uh, social communication, behavior change communication, if you ask most communicators, they'll tell you that those, those kind of areas are very tough. Okay. Then when there's any convenient product in the market, like a Maggi noodle, like a biscuit, uh, like kurkure. Very, very tough to ask people to now start making good roti and eat good roti only. Very difficult. Because once your behavior has changed, it's very difficult to switch back. Okay, so behavior changes is always back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And the people who achieve behavior change very beautifully are multinational companies. See, as a, young, as a young person in the 70s, as a young teenager in the 70s, we had no shampoo conditioner in the market. So in, in the 70s, I grew up in Calcutta. So in the 70s, yeah. we had a, you know, it was a kanch ki botel, jiske andar, bikkul pani type shampoo milta tha, tata chemicals likha wa wa tha. So my mother would get that and some khushbu was there in that uh, botel. And then my mother would say, oh, only once in a way you can use it. But otherwise it was shika kai. Okay. Then, uh, okay, there's, there's some question that's coming. Okay, we answer that later. So I'll tell you, continue my story about this shampoo, which I'm very fond of saying. Then, uh, so, so by the time I had, you know, say joined NID in 1980, shampoo and all was very easily available, but conditioner had just kind of started. Conditioners were just a kind of available. And I think by mid 85, conditioners were there everywhere. And then the, the ads were telling you that you are a loser. If you don't use conditioner, you're a pretty loser, you know? So you have to buy that damn thing together. Okay. So some of, some of these companies with their ads, they do beautiful behavior change. Because mass communication ke liye paise nahi hota hai. We don't have money for that. So, and uh, it's not glamorous. You know, that axe effect, you know, 
that guy who gets into the lift and he does that push push with that ax effect and you know all the women are swooning over him in the lift and all that you know if we had that if he had all that money today everyone in india would be uh doing many many different kinds of things for example uh, i don't think there's been okay government of india has done massive massive communication about wear a mask but what's happening koi bhi nahi pehenta hai bahut kam log pehente hain right and then ek bar vaccination lag gaya everybody thinks that ah, i'm good so social communication to just give you a sense is very slow it takes a lot of time it takes generations some things take longer some things are very quick for example clothes like i told you uh, earlier in my visuals and my drawings 25 years ago i would draw a farmer with a dhoti now if i draw a farmer with a dhoti they'll say ye to basa hai basa means old man so a farmer will wear lowers you know jo lowers hum log nahi pehente would would jockey wale lowers you know they are called everybody is wearing that it's comfortable to work in the field with that or you're wearing those uh, you know uh, you know those short like things bermuda type bermuda we call them bermuda shorts something like what i mean is you know gutne tak jo shorts aate hai na so nobody is wearing the dhoti when you're working in the field very few people are wearing dhoti then uh, adolescent girls earlier we would draw adolescent girls in our pictures with wearing a ghagra and a dupatta adolescent girls now wear salwar kameez whether it's kerala whether it's uttarakhand or whether it's northeast adolescent girls will wear northeast adolescent girls of course wear a lot of t-shirts and trousers they dress very differently but yeah so to, long answer to your short question yes uh, okay there are some questions that have come yes, in yes ma'am i will just come so to the please question. just you know yeah so uh, first we have a question from mr anil bose is from the graphic design department Okay. so uh, i also had a similar thing in mind so I, sir is asking uh, sir wants to know about the difference between a wooden cover and a book version as a better communication and magic so uh, so i had also this similar question because the cover is incomplete without the storyteller so when you are making it into a book how are you transforming that okay so uh, so see that see the cover uh, that that we developed is also was also a self learning tool it did not necessarily have to have a storyteller with that person and uh, with the with the cover but having said that for a cover we would always somebody would be you know we would always stand there and we would uh, explain each as each door opened out it would be explained uh, and then the that narrative form is very exciting because everybody is listening to everybody is looking at it then in for a group of say 40 people because normally we never never go more than 35 actually 35 to is a big number for us so you would have five six covers in a class and then you know every group would individually then see it so we do exactly the same thing with a covered book uh what the, the system we follow is that in a group of five people or four people they have one cover so supposing it's a class of 35 people uh you know five people in a group every group has this cover and the trainer has the cover book and you open each door as you explain jaise jaise hum badhte hain hamare sharir mein kis tarah se badlav aati hai and then you know you use it in different ways for example you point to uh, you know we call them sundar and sundari because you give them you give the adolescent that body a name so you say ki kya sundar agar 16 saal ki umar mein kya sundar kya pitaji ban sakta hai so that's the question you will ask and then of course the the, the adolescents have been through your class they'll say ha kyunki uske sharir mein virya bana hua hai he has sperms already in his body lekin then the next question will be kya itna jaldi wo kya baap banne se theek hai kya ki nahi nahi usko to abhi padhna hai usko to kamana hai you know so the trainer will use the tool in different ways and you will you will definitely uh while it's a self learning tool nothing like having a trainer or a storyteller along with it the, that joy of that is totally different i mean we all know na online versus you know yeah. meeting a student we all know that very well so it's the same thing okay so there's a question from bhumal uh, shakhawat uh, ma'am uh, were there times when people were not ready to listen or learn on specific topics and how did you deal with that 
see, we don't, uh, we give what is called informed choice to the, to our communities, because uh, we believe that everyone has a right to uh, analytically look at what we are sharing. So it's up to the community. You uh, know, uh, we call it tark with tark means and analyzing it. Just look at if, if we have shown you so many menstrual products, we are not we are not saying don't use this or we are saying don't use the plastic pad. Definitely we are saying that. But we are saying it's available in the market. I mean, you know, we can't stop you from buying it. But we will just want you to know that these are the ill effects of a, uh, say, of a, plas of a plastic based disposable sanitary napkin. So, Momal, your question was uh, when people are not ready to learn or, or listen. Yeah. See, these things are all uphill to us making people switch from a from a disposal pad to a cloth pad these are very difficult things so uh, we move we, we move with what we have to because we believe that we believe that cloth cloth and reusable has to be communicated to people so sometimes we don't give up that is our philosophy so yes the, the most difficult audience for us is urban audience urban audience are more difficult than rural or rural people. Rural people uh, don't think that rural people are, because they are not simple. They are as complex as an urban audience. With an urban audience, what happens is the municipality takes away your disposal, disposed waste. In a rural community, there is no municipality picking up your kachra. You, they have to burn it themselves. They have to take care of those plastic things themselves. Okay, so they are more open and ready to understand that this product messes with our fields and they only become micro beads over, over time and they are getting into our uh, soil. So having said that, uh, cloth is an accepted menstrual product across the world. Across, across the world, I would go so far as to say 98% people are using cloth. It's only 2% of the world that can afford disposable products, you know? And uh, the, the uh, uh, groups that have finances will switch to a menstrual cup. People who have health products will, will switch to, uh, say, cloth-based products. So yes, how do we deal with it? We just hope that communities will understand the larger issue. We, we are hoping that communities will understand how to mask. We are hope, hoping that communities will understand when you say ki funeral mein 30 logon se jyada nahi hona chahiye shaadi mein 50 logon ke sath jyada nahi hona chahiye what are what are our political parties doing they are having their rallies no but lage raho munda bhai theek hai wo to lage rehna padta hai because you you have strong convictions about it na to lage rehna padta hai okay, there is one more question about smartphones yes. shall i read it out once okay. So Ranjan uh, is asking, uh, as smartphones are now widely available in remote areas too, do you see a shift in communication strategies? Yes, there is a minor shift. There's no doubt about it at all. But smartphones are not available to all. It's a, it's a, it is there. A lot of people have it now. There's no, no three ways about it. People, more and more people have smartphones. But the adolescent girl, for example, will not have a smartphone. Uh, because our brother will have it because there's a gender issue here. Uh, you know, adolescent girls, very few adolescent girls have smartphones. Uh, fathers will have smartphones. Their brothers will have smartphones. Smartphones are also shared. For example, you uh, have SIM card in your SIM card. So, in one SIM card, you can share it in your family. You can share it in your family. You can share it in your family. You can share it in which, you, know, paise aa jayenge, you know, SIM cards are also shared. So it's, it's not totally right to believe that smartphones are there everywhere. Yes, it is there. There's no doubt about that. Then uh, connectivity issue is there. People have to still climb onto trees and all to, you know, uh, get connected. So that, that issue is there. And is there a shift in uh, communication strategies? Yes, because in my office, for example, with our field workers, it's all WhatsApp. We never did WhatsApp three years back. 
uh, Anganwadi center is supposed to open at 8 in the morning. Anganwadi centers are these government centers. They're supposed to open at 8 in the morning. So we, we have this Anganwadi project and we have we are working with, say, my organization is working with 600 Anganwadis. And I, I'm supposing I'm the coordinator because the NGO coordinator is managing this. I'm the NGO coordinator. And mere under me, pandra, pandra Anganwadi mere under me hai. So in the morning, I have to I have to send a WhatsApp photograph that ye khula hai aur Anganwadi worker time se hai. Aur ye, ye photo bheja hai. And the, the, then the NGO, the NGO coordinator sends it to the his boss. And the boss will then report to the super boss saying, yes, uh, I am in charge of 10 coordinators and 10 coordinators have told me at 8 a.m. that eight centers have opened this morning. So then wo peshe hoti hai ki do center kyo nahi khula. So we are using smartphones for these kind of things also. Keeping in touch for monitoring, uh, for gathering evidence. Abhi jaise, for example, uh, hum kyaate hai ki falana falana gao mein Hamko patch case malnutrition. Sarkar to pele hai believe in a karti. They would try and, you know, ne 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 kese ham to gaye thema pe. Now it's just photographs. You can just say parivar one me yeta, parivar two me yeta, ki patch log malnutrition. Hey, up some alloisko. Like. Okay. Then uh, Charlie is asking. Charlie, How people react? when you went to rural areas to educate them about the about menstruation and what all struggles uh, did you face initially see when you are when you are working in the area of uh, when you when you're working in any any concept in any area whether it's menstruation whether it is installing a hand pump anything anything that you want to do new in a locality in a village you have to first meet everyone you have to meet everybody there you have to meet the sarpanch you have to meet the leaders. You know, you have to get their opinion. Ki bhai, is tarah se humne hand pump laga rahe, bhai, kahan lagana hai? Ya, is tarah se road repairing ka kaam ho raha hai? Ya, is tarah se hum ek kai, man lo, uh, kuch, let me give you, say another example. What, what is the other example I can give you? Uh, ki uh, hum log ek, for example, ek naya education center hum log khol rahe, gao ke andar. So you have to constantly be in touch with the people there. So in the area of menstruation, it was the same thing. Uh, you know, we, we, we knew that we had to work with adolescents. So the first point of contact is with parents. First, you talk to the parents and you say, ki bhai, is tarah se hum log karne ja rahe hain. Kya aap tayar ho aapke bachcho ko bhejne ke liye. Then they'll ask, you know, kya batane patao ya. Then you will say, ki bhai, ye is tarah se hum periods ke baare mein batayenge. Uh, then things like periods are very easy with the girls, you know. Then they say, ha ah, batana kyunki ye to ladkiyo ka mamla hai. Bilkul aap batayye. Then, uh, and who are the parents that we are talking to? Some parents are involved in some other projects with us or some parents are involved in the SHG groups, you know. SHG groups are these uh, finance, you know, we have these, isko kaise samjau? Uh, everyone contributes a little bit of money and then there is a, you make these little clubs. And then uh, you can you can get government uh, to give you loans. You can get banks to give you loans to the group. So we have these group members. So that the group members, we talk to them and we say, "Kya is tarah se ham karne ja rahe ki aapka aap you know aapka isme sahyog chahiye." So there's a lot of pre, pre preparation. You can't just get under get under a banyan tree and start talking about this. No, both sare pehle se preparation hota. Our field workers do that. You know, talking to the sarpanch, talking to this, talking to that. Both sare prep karna padta iske liye. And then, you know, one group is formed. And then youth clubs are formed like that. So at a time we are looking at, for example, in one project, we are looking at four and a half thousand adolescents. In another project, we have 3,000 adolescents like that. So the outreach is like that, you know. And then again, everyone needs to be in the loop before you begin. Because... Uh, for example, if you're looking at contraception for young people, that is very hard because everyone believes that aap to, uh, uh, condom ke mein bata rahe ho, aap to goli ke mein bata rahe ho, hamare bachche to bas bigad jayenge, use karne lag jayenge, phir, phir hum, humko batana padta hai ki nahi, research ne ye dikhaya hai ki jitna aap bachcho ko batao ge, utna wo apne shereer ka khyal rakhenge. Which 15-year-old girl wants to be pregnant without getting married? 
you know these things these are and you know when when a when a young 14 year old girl or a 15 year old gets pregnant she she's she doesn't it's something she doesn't want it's happened by by uh, you know maybe she was forced maybe her you know boyfriend said are ek bar ek bar hum log sambandh karne se kuch nahi hoga ya jo bhi hai uh, teenagers and adolescents have different notions about all this okay so when you tell them that see if you get pregnant early these are the repercussions you will have later everyone gets careful you talk to young boys about responsibility young men also get careful so it works like this together but menstruation is a fairly easy fairly easier thing to manage as opposed to things like contra contraception so within reproductive health there are some easy things abortion is also very not a very easy thing people don't like it anyway in the first place everybody thinks abortion is illegal in india so that is the first communication we have to do that it's it is illegal only in certain so sort of, you you know if if you are uh, going in for a say a sex determination when you have conceived then it is illegal you know so these things have to be explained otherwise it is a legal process in india it was legalized in 1971 very few people you know know that those things so as i said so hey yeah, i'm not talking too much hello <laughs> uh, ma'am uh, we have <laughs> some uh, oh, appreciations so uh, i would just like to read them out uh, thank you from archana shastri uh, thank you says, <laughs> a great contribution thank you uh, from aldana gonzales saying hi from argentina i really like your speech and i believe that we as designers ought to focus on sustainable development activism and raise awareness sustainable sustainability is the key okay. yeah you have and also we have uh, from ranjan who says that uh, wonderful learned a lot about communication for behavior change for rural women uh, it, it was indeed a great experience and uh, uh, this thing uh, it actually is quite uh, quite a question that uh, you know how to influence people for behavior change and how the social structure if it's uh, sort of rigid i believe in a village so maybe uh, it is easier to make certain behavior changes right and in a city where it's more fluid and people are all uh, there is a municipality looking at, at certain things so perhaps that is uh, i mean in terms of marketing the behavioral change is easier in the city so that was quite an interesting uh, i mean that's what you were saying i believe yeah it is easy it, it may it appears easy but just see what people are doing in the cities you know with no mask so right. uh, it's complex let's just let's just call right. it complex behavior right. change is complex some things are easier some things are behavior change for uh, maggi noodle and all is very easy <laughs> i will Uh, it is my favorite example because i mean everywhere you you get chips everywhere no it's right. my favorite favorite example because food now packaged food is everywhere so how easily we make that switch to biscuits to convenience when when a convenient product comes in then you know be you, you stop caring about what it happen, what happens to the environment when it when it comes in because look at maggi noodle na it comes in a plastic packet then the masala will come in a plastic packet in a pouch so you know i mean i'm targeting maggi noodle but there's so many products like that <laughs> yeah so but you have to whoever is whoever is listening the young people you have to at least say goodbye to uh, you know paper paper tissues you know to wipe your nose etc just buy those hankies yeah and don't worry if you lose them just buy another 10 more it's just not worth it it's just not worth messing the environment with that paper tissue thing hanky is good and don't believe it if people say that is more hygienic how can it be hygienic you're throwing that paper somewhere and it's it's going and sitting in somebody else's backyard at least your hanky is sitting in your own backyard you know like that so we have to start as designers we have to start thinking about this you know the larger world yeah okay that was a wonderful session and i believe uh... Uh, it was quite enriching for all the participants and attendees and uh, 
so I would just like to end uh, this session now. Uh, uh, before ending, I would uh, like to thank you, ma'am, again for your enriching experience and sharing your uh, point of view. And uh, so I would just like to point out uh, about tomorrow's session. Uh, so tomorrow's session will be taken by Dr. Vishal Rao, who will speak on creativity in medical practices. So he is the chief of uh, head and neck surgical oncology and robotic surgery at HCG's uh, cancer center. So uh, all the attendees hope to see all of you in tomorrow's session. And uh, please pass the word. And uh, so with this, I would like to end this. And thank you, ma'am, again. Thank you. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, see you all sometime here. Sure, definitely. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.